in this section I'm going to add to the model a demand pattern to reflect the peak demand uses uh, on the system to go to the, the pattern section you go to your browser pattern and then add a new pattern I'm going to call my pattern peak 7 and you can see down here we have slots to put in multipliers of the average demand rate assigned to nodes. We'll do that. We'll assign the nodes the uh, demand rate to, uh, in another section. But right now we're going to put the uh, pattern multiplier of those demand rates. Uh, I'm going to use 18 of these to correspond to 18 hours. You can see here my time period is set to one hour. I could have it set to anything I want. I could have it down to a minute if I wanted a really fine resolution demand pattern or half an hour. Let me just show you how to do that really quick. I'm going to keep that saved as peak 7. It's asking me if I want to change references to pattern 2 to peak 7 because it was formerly named pattern 2 by default. I'm going to say no to that. Um, if I want to change that um, the steps in between, I would go to Options, Times, and Pattern Step, 0.5, we'll change it to half an hour, and I'll go back to my patterns and choose the peak 7 again. To edit it, you can see it's changed to half an hour here, so each of these steps would now be half an hour, and you can change that to any value you like. Uh, I'm going to keep it as um, one hour, so I'm going to go back and change that again real quick. and I'm going to start to add in my values starting at uh, the first hour period. I'm going to consider this to be about midnight, everybody's sleeping, so I'm going to say my uh, change the name of my pad by accident there, I should be clicked into there. I'm going to say it's going to be 0 0.1 for the first hour, very little use, people are sleeping, it's midnight. Uh, the next one I'm going to use 0 0.2 for a little later in the morning and uh, the third hour, 0 0.4. Uh, increase a little bit as people start to wake up and go to work at the fourth hour. The fifth hour is going to be my peak demand of 7. Sixth hour, it's going to ebb down a little bit to 1.5. 7, I'm going to go down to 0 0.5. I'm going to go ahead and enter the rest of these. As you may guess, I've used this pattern before, so I'm uh, kind of cheating here a little bit. Usually you have to um, tweak it a little bit. What we're trying to do, you may see here, the average is uh, basically it's adding up these values and dividing by the number of them to get the average. You want that to be 1.0 uh, ideally. Uh, I've I've played with this and I know that the numbers I enter up to 18 hours are going to average this out to 1.0. Um, if you're going to use a different uh, demand pattern that's more appropriate for your community, uh, you'd want to try to get this to the demand pattern completed. Let me just explain it uh, as it stands before us now. Here's midnight, people are sleeping, people start to wake up as the morning approaches, some early rises here, peak demand as, as the majority of people go to work, um, it ebbs off again as uh, the later rises get up, a, a lull in the water rate use here, maybe mid-morning when people are busy at work or in their offices, another small peak here uh, during lunchtime when people use kitchens and sinks, another lull during the busy part of the afternoon when people aren't using uh, m many water facilities, uh, and then again we see a small peak as people return home and cook dinners and maybe shower for the next day, and then ebb off again to, to night time and when people are sleeping, the 18 hour uh, of course linking back to the zero hour here. And again this is, this is uh, an 18 hour day as opposed to a 24, so it's a little bit more compressed. I'm going to save that. 
here and again it's it's wise to save these I actually already did save this pattern it's right here and if I wanted to resave it just pretend this isn't here right now uh, save this peak seven and this would allow me to um, import this into another um, model EPA net model at a later date if I didn't save it it's just going to stay with this model and I wouldn't be able to import it into others yes replace that and okay now to assign those patterns to my nodes I would go to the node um, you can actually see here I've, I've jumped ahead of myself here and I've uh, I'm renaming these nodes as uh, home one home two home three and home four and that just makes things easier and more uh, logical to follow when you've got a small model like this to actually name the nodes something that's significant to those nodes uh, so starting with this uh, home four node I'm going to uh, assign it the peak seven pattern again it'd be nice if there was a drop down menu but the EVA note unfortunately doesn't have it I'm going to save a little time here by doing a copy and paste so I can copy and paste it into the other nodes and that's all of my homes with uh, assigned values for the uh, pattern. Uh, you can see here is where I uh, would assign base demand. Um, for base demand uh, for my homes I'm going to use a value of 0.35 gallons per minute. Uh, these units are the same as the overall hydraulic units which are gallons per minute we chose under the um, options at the in the first video. Again, I'm going to do a copy and paste, each home being the same. And this would uh, correspond uh, uh, approximately to um, 500 gallons per day, which is conservative, a lot of water, but uh, I want this model to be fairly conservative. And it's not allowing me to actually do a copy and paste into those, so that's just something I learned. And I'm going to close that down to save those. I'm actually going to change the, the uh, name of this pump as well to B1. And this tank to high tank. And again, it just makes it a little bit more intuitive when you see the reports for what these nodes are. I'm going to end this uh, segment now.